thank the Coast Salish people for allowing us to be here on their unceded territories, and especially for being conscious stewards of the land and the waters for generations, which is exactly what we need to learn at this time of ecological crisis, which is exactly what we're here to do and talk about. So when I was approached with this, this theme, that there's it's so massive and there's so many things to touch on, and I didn't really know where to begin, and I kind of defaulted back to a lot of the exciting discourse around the Occupy movements around the world. And one of the things I kept falling back on was this notion that the, often the, the mainstream media critique of, well, what is the message? What is the big message? And which seems so obvious in so many ways. But I started thinking about it a little bit more. And I was thinking that, to me, in some ways, uh, which relates very much to the topic of ecology and systemic change and sustainability, uh, which is that, to me, the Occupy movement is essentially an anti-war movement. And the way I see it, it's against market fundamentalist war against life. It's against community. It's a war that is essentially against ecology, against justice, against human rights. It's a war against the commons. To me, that encapsulates my understanding of what people are speaking out against and acting against right now and proposing alternatives for. And so that's what's exciting about the conversations and actions happening today around with the indignados and the occupiers and the resistors and the revolutionaries that have been working not just in this phase, but for many phases, against this war on the commons. That we must oppose this war on life and establish new modes of being and relationship, which are often rooted in very old knowledge and understanding that we need to remember. Um, I've been working in collaboration with a, a close friend um, on a project uh, a film project, essentially, but it's sort of morphing into other things, that looks at, and my friend who is an ecological economist, uh, we've been trying to track this idea of unlimited growth uh, and this very destructive and insane, psychotic uh, concept of unlimited growth within a, a world that has limits. The, fi the finite reality of this world and its systems and its ecological closed loop systems having no s relationship to this idea, this economic notion that we must grow. Okay? And how frightening it is that the discourse within the superstructure of policy and governance is still rooted in this idea of unlimited growth, that GDP must continue to rise, even though it has no relationship to reality or the consequences, or will take any accountability for the consequences it engenders in the process of destruction. And interestingly, about 10 years ago, when we started thinking about this and proposing it as a notion or an idea to deconstruct and unpack, it was interesting that a lot of people responded kind of going, well, what, what else is there? How could, what, what else could be a replacement for the GDP? Or um, how, why would you want to question growth? And it, Definitely in the mainstream media, very rarely would you ever hear anything or critique around growth. But interestingly, in the last, especially in the last year or so, I've noticed that the discussion around economics is always coming back to this. It's, it's like the big elephant in the room. Can we talk about sustainability? Can we talk about an ecological consciousness? Can we talk about uh, all the injustices that we're facing without dealing with the system that is predicated on something that is completely insane. So um, I just wanted to show a very short clip of a beginning of this project.